Christ has risen, he has risen indeed, alleluia. Good morning. This is Pastor Krieg from Our Savior Lutheran Church and School, and this is Daily Devotions for April the 21st. It is the Tuesday after the second Sunday of Easter. And so let us begin. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm reading for this Tuesday comes from the 127th Psalm, and it reminds us of who we are in Christ. It reminds us of what God does for us to um, watch over us, to defend us, to keep us in his household. And so let us read from the 127th Psalm. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil. For he gives to the beloved sleep. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. And so in Psalm 127, we hear from the psalmist about how our houses, um, how our families and those families that dwell in those houses are a gift from God, um, that he gives these things to us. And without God's love and protection and God's will, um, we would have none of it. And we also have to remember that the houses that we have and the walls are fragile and and that the, the rooms would be empty without God's blessings. Um, and so Every day we are blessed by our Heavenly Father um, at uh, another day of life, another day lived um, in the salvation won for us by His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and that all that He provides for us, He provides for us out of uh, fatherly love for His dear children. And so um, during these times, that helps us uh, to remember um, that, that we shouldn't be anxious, that we shouldn't worry, because God watches over us. And we shouldn't also uh, be too self-reliant upon ourselves, thinking that we've done it all. Because as he starts out, unless the Lord builds the house, then the those who build it labor in vain. Um, so without the Lord, all that we try to do and accomplish comes to nothing um, in the end. Because it is only God that, that gives the good things of this life. Now, our New Testament reading is along these same lines. It is from the 12th chapter of Luke, and it is Christ's um, words to us about anxiety and about being anxious and how we are to uh, approach life um, lived in light of who we are in Christ. And so let us hear from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the 12th chapter of Luke. And he said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body, what you will put on. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They neither snow, sow nor reap. They neither, storehouse, uh, they neither have storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, being, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? If then you are not able to do all as small a thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass, which is alive in the field today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor be worried. For all the nations of the world seek after those things, and your Father knows that you need them. And said, Seek his kingdom, and these things will be added to you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. 
sell your possessions and give to the needy. Provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old, with a treasure in the heavens that do not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there will your heart also be. And so with this section of Scripture, um, this section of Luke's Gospel, uh, our Savior encourage us to put our trust in God, that, that all that we have is a gift from God, and so there is no need for us to be anxious. And in the situation that we're in today with the coronavirus and the quarantines and the uncertainties and now not going to be able to come back to school for the rest of the year, um, there are a lot of things that can cause anxiety, can cause us to stress out. Um, but, but Jesus tells us there's no need for that. Look at all of our creation. Look how God protects and maintains and takes care of all the things around us. And how much more precious are you? Because Christ died for you. Christ gave his life for you. Um, and if he's going to do that for you, um, just uh, there's no need for you to worry because he's accomplished everything you need. And so um, he's given you parents to love you, to protect you, and to take care of you, to provide for you. Um, and he's given you faith to know that he is your savior. And so all else fades away. All the worries and anxieties, um, we don't need to carry those along with us because we have Christ and he has done all for us. And we take pleasure in that, knowing um, that he is our Lord and savior and that we rest secured in his loving arms. Now, our writing from the church fathers today comes from Martin Luther's large catechism. Um, and this is a discussion he is having um, concerning the, the first commandment. And uh, we remember what the first commandment is, right? You shall have no other gods, that we should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. And so let us hear from Luther concerning the first commandment. It says, Many a person thinks that he has God and everything in abundance when he has money and possessions. He trusts in them and boasts about them with such firmness and assurance as to care for no one. Such a person has a God by the name of Mammon, on which he sets all his heart. This is the most common idol on earth. He who has money and possession feels secure and is joyful and undismayed as though he were sitting in the midst of paradise. On the other hand, he who has no money doubts and is despondent as though he knew of no God. For very few people can be found who are of good cheer and who neither mourn nor complain if they lack mammon. This care and desire for money sticks and clings to our nature right up to the grave. So too, whoever trusts and boasts that he has great skill, prudence, power, favor, friendship, and honor also has a God. But it is not the true and only God. This truth reappears when you notice how arrogant, secure, and proud people are because of such possessions and how despondent they are when the possessions no longer exist or are withdrawn. Therefore, I repeat that the chief explanation of this point is that to have a God is to have something in which the heart entirely trusts. And so Luther is restating what Christ has told us in uh, that last section that we just heard about in from Luke. Um, so was, as he says, for where your treasure is, there your heart also will be. Um, we don't trust and put our faith in possessions, in material things, um, because they fade. They don't last. Um, what we trust in is the God of our salvation, in Jesus Christ, in the Trinity, in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That is what we put our trust and faith in. That is our true God. And anything else that, that tries to take the place of that, um, it is becomes our God. It becomes a false God. And that's how we um, sin against the first commandment. A lot of us think, well, I would never worship any other God. I only worship Jesus and the Trinity. But Luther rightly points out that uh, anything that you place in your heart as a treasure um, has the ability to become your God. And so uh, we don't worship the creation. We worship the creator. And that is uh, our God and Father in heaven, uh, because he has given us everything. And so we should be uh, wary of that, that possessions don't make us who we are. Our identity in Christ is what makes us who we are. And so um, we remember that as we go forward. 
And now let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we can now pray the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please join now as we pray the prayers of the day. O Lord, grant us wisdom to recognize the treasures you have stored up for us in heaven, that we may never despair, but always rejoice and be thankful for the riches of your grace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so now I hope that your day is fruitful and that you are able to uh, be attentive to your studies, that um, this day brings forth knowledge and understanding of God's creation and of God's word and will for your life. And so until we meet again tomorrow, I'm Pastor Krieg. Have a blessed day.